Good afternoon to everyone. We want to welcome you again to our Sabbath School lesson review. We need to just remind you that we are looking at the Seventh-day Adventist quarterly, Sabbath School quarterly. If you do not have one with us, but you want to share with us, you can go on to Google, just like anyone does, the SDA quarterly, and you would look at the fourth quarter. The quarterly is a guide, a Bible study help that we do daily. We review on different topics. This quarter, of course, we're dealing with mission. Our mission, which is really what God is instructing us and asking us to do as his mission or our mission. And we're looking just like last week, you know, those, how do we deal with those who are less fortunate, those who are going through different difficulties and challenges. So, of course, as we do, then you will be blessed. And we hope that everything will work all right. We just want to bow our heads and we pray as we pray, asking God's blessings and guidance. Brother Jesuit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, it is indeed a wonderful thing that we can come to you in your son's name to give you all the glory, to give you all the praise that is due unto your holy name. As we dwell here this today, Lord, we ask for your guidance. We ask for your indwelling of your Holy Spirit. And we ask, O oh Father, for you to open our minds, open the minds of our listeners and give them an understanding in your words about you and what you can do for them. May this lesson bring a measure of comfort to them, to those who do not know what to do. May you speak to their hearts and may they be blessed by our lesson review is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Of mm. course, good afternoon, as we said once again. And we are actually doing a recording before. But of course, imagine like today is the Sabbath, when we would have actually been reviewing. So we want to say pleasant Sabbath to you. The Sabbath is a time of rest from all our physical activities and a time that we could fellowship with each other and with God. Of course, this week we are looking at the mission, it says, to the powerful. A mission is a duty. A mission is a task that we have. And of course, God is instructing us as to what we need to do. We have a, a passage of scripture, Matthew chapter 16 and verse 26 from the book, um, the Bible, the first book in the Bible, the 16th chapter, the 26th um, verse. And it's been read or being written in the New King James Version. Listen to what it says. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? What do you understand by that text, Brother Jezreel? Well, this text um, speaks um, volumes, you know, in that um, it is really saying, if today or tomorrow I don't have everything that I have, what is it that I am going to God with? All right? God really and truly is the custodian or is, is the, not really custodian, but is the, how should I put it? God is the ultimate master of everything that we see, everything that we have. And yes, we are on this earth. God gave us life. And at the end of our life, some people say sometimes that we live we eat and we die. But is that really true? No. I, I say no. Because the Bible states that one after life, there is death. And after death, there is judgment. So, if I gain everything that is on the world, what am I going to bring to God? What is my answer to God when, ask, when God asks me, what did you do for me? May I ask a question? Yeah. So, is there anything wrong with gaining, if you want to call the whole world, having a measure of wealth, having a measure of, of power, having a measure of affluence, etc.? No, nothing is wrong with having or gaining wealth. But the important thing to know and to note is that you cannot put or you should not put the 
wealth, the material thing above God, above the relationship with God. Because the Bible states in Proverbs that um, wisdom is the beginning or how should I put it? The wisdom, knowing God is the beginning of wisdom. Sorry. Knowing God is the beginning of wisdom. So therefore, I, I say God is the one that is that that is our that is our creator, He's our Redeemer. And there is nothing wrong in gaining wealth, status, being powerful. But what we have to understand is that we have to put God first in our lives as opposed to putting our material even material things before. Okay, because that's why it asks, what does it profit a man if he would gain all the world and then what? Lose in the end, you realize the ultimate is. Because there's really life after what we call death, death. life after this earthly life. And then what does it profit? Um, for you to have all these things, etc. Now, there are some examples of individuals before, and even in moving on with our life, we need to realize that we need to use examples for us to be able to move on. Mm -hmm. So there is Naaman, there's Nebuchadnezzar, there's Nicodemus, there's Zacchaeus, there's some others that we will use even and touch base with them to be able to see what about them, because some of them had a measure of financial, um, um, financial attainments that they had reached to, some had been powerful and so many things, intellectualism, etc. And we will understand and see what it, what it is. Now, even in the quarterly tells us, though written many years ago, the Bible, which is the word of God, is the revelation. It reveals and tells us about God's truth for our world. And among those many truths it reveals is that human nature and that whatever in, let's say, the 17th century before in Judea or even today, even in the 21st century, Brazil, Dominica, wherever it is, people are basically the same. Sinners in need of divine grace. So we haven't changed. Same no. us, no. pictures. Yeah. yeah, that's all that would yeah. be different. But yeah. there is one thing that is necessary and needed. Of course, that includes the rich and the powerful. So sometimes we think, in other words, that it's maybe not for them, or maybe it's more for them than others. And something that we realize even through as we go, there are situations where those who are maybe more affluential or influential than others think they do not need them, or they are it, while those who have nothing or are nothing, in other words. But if you realize, these are the individuals who actually always, Lord, I don't have any bread. I don't have any of this. So, Lord, will you provide? While this rich guy just says, hello, just call. You don't even have to go down to the supermarket. Just pick up the phone and call and tell them to send this up to my house. Of course, hey. All of us wish maybe we had that, but really, what does it profit if we would do that? And then when we look at it, we come to the end of time and the end of our life that we realize, hey, it didn't profit us anything. So the rich and powerful of Bible times were no different from the same rich and powerful in our modern times, especially in the pursuit of wealth and fame and power. Most times, not always, at the expense of the vulnerable. This week, we're going to look at some of these examples and see what it is. Let, let, let's look at a guy as Naaman. Yes, what yes you know about but, but before, go we go mm. to, before we go we'll to, look at Naaman, okay. Before we look at Naaman, mm. and that is what we want our viewers to, to, to understand. Poor, rich, powerful, or otherwise, we are all human beings. We are all human beings. We, may, we, we, we all suffer from diseases. We all suffer one way or the other. Not because you are poor, that, you, that, that means you, you, don't, <laughs> you don't suffer from sickness. You do. And likewise, we all need Jesus Christ. We all need salvation. Yes. And we are going to look at Naaman. Naaman in, 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 Bible, in, in Bible times in, was a, a powerful leader in Syria. He was the general. In, in, in the king of Syria, in, in, in Syria, and he was powerful. And we, and, and we are given an account of, we are given an account of that in Sorry. Come on. You have in First Kings or in Chronicles? First, Second Kings, yes. In Second Kings 5.9. 
in Second Kings. Now, now Naaman, we I read him from Second Kings five, five nine, five one to nineteen. I'm not going to read. I'm just going and give a, a, a few mm -hmm. verses. Now, Naaman, captain of the host of king of of the host of king of Syria, was a great man with his master, an honorable man, because by him the Lord had given him given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. Now, when, when we look at, at, at this, this first verse there, we, we, we notice two things. He said that he was captain of the host of Syria. Mm -hmm. He was a great master. He was a great man mm -hmm. with his master. He was honorable. Why was he honorable? Because God was with him. It says that there. Because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. Because God found favor in Naaman. Everything Naaman touched, he was being successful. That's what the Bible says there. All right? And, but also, he was a man, he was a man with leprosy. He was a leper. All right? And further down in the story, you will see where there is a, 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 young, a young servant that was in his, in his house, that was serving his wife. And when she saw that Naaman, her master now, was sick, she said that he wished he would go to the man of God, the prophet of God in Israel, so that mm -hmm. he could be healed. Yes. What does that say to us, um, brother, brother, brother Dominic? You see, we, 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 we get to the point where a powerful man, and like I alluded to earlier, yeah. we all are the same because we suffer just as. Just as. So Naaman was in that, in, that, in that same situation as a sick man today. Yes, brother, I'm Dominic. No, while he would have had that measure of wealth or measure of power, you realize that there are certain things, when it comes to that, the wealth and power has nothing to do. So he couldn't decide, hey, let me go down to this pharmacy and buy this or whatever it is. Well, the pharmacy he had to get to was the one that the maiden was, the little maid, his servant was actually telling him that he should go to. Yes. Now, the thing of it too, when we look at it, sometimes people who have power or wealth, or maybe these upper class people, as we would say, might think, but why he don't just come and pray for me now? Or maybe if he touch me, you know, why he want to give me all this kind of long story, you know, that I have to go and bathe in this place, and, but that is dirty water, look, there's clean other places, etc. You see, there are certain things that the Lord wants us, even in our situations, to help us through, that we would realize everything we are and are, are dependent on him. And of course, that's what happened with him. So Naaman then, of course, finally, after, you know, they convinced him and whatever it is, went across to this place. So he brought this big kind of gift and everything else for this man of God. And the man of God said, listen, that's not necessary. Listen, this is what you have to end up doing. And still he was like, wait a while, this, to a certain extent in his mind, why he might not have said it. And you could sometimes read through and see certain things or read people's minds, you know, maybe from what has been said. This guy doesn't know who I am. I'm a man of power and everything else. For matter of fact, he should be coming to me. I should be coming to him. But anyway, they had to convince him. The simple remedy was not take one teaspoon of this twice a day, three times a day. Listen, just go into this water and dip seven times. Hmm. Wow. This water is dirty down there. You know, we have some clean stuff. Or maybe my even the big pool in my house, you know, or in the yard where I live, etc. It's all right. It's better as this. But God says, God requires of us certain things that we have to do and we have to do. And it's only after he would have followed and gone through the instructions. So he dipped the first time and he was like, okay, let me go. That should be all right. Second, they had to convince him, listen, seven, seven is not there. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. But only as he followed all this stuff and he, he actually obeyed what the, the, the prophet told him, then he realized and he experienced the change that is necessary. There is nothing in our lives that we can do and we need to understand that without God intervening and God's direction and instructions. And that's something we need to, to bear in mind. 
That has nothing to do with church and religion. It's dealing with a relationship that what God is requiring of you, what God is asking you to do. And if you follow, then everything works all right. Now, this was this powerful man who, in other words, no one had maybe dared to or no one had at, at least attempted to maybe say, listen, you know, have you read that passage of scripture? Or why don't you go to church? Or why don't you call the pastor or call the priest or whoever it is to pray for you or to lead you? It's important that we need to understand these individuals are just like us. So in other words, a person might just have a little more money than others, but the same you, same blood, same everything mm -hmm. else was mm -hmm. going on. So there's no difference. So we mustn't feel afraid or shy. Or maybe we're at work and we think, boy, the boss have this big car driving and me, a little cabo, we all have to take boss to come to work. No, he is in need of that which will transform his life just as you are benefiting and being transformed. Of course, so we understand Naaman in terms of that. Um, there's so much Naaman desired not to make any concessions to adultery by worshipping the hidden God. So after he was healed, he then realized that God really is the thing, the person. Everything else that I do and have to be is God. So of course, he decided that he was going to live a right for God and become an influence. Now, let's look at another guy, Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. This guy even in the description in the Bible with this image where he was the head of gold. Now, gold is, if somebody gives you to choose between silver and brass and gold, which would you choose first? Gold. Gold, why? But brass just has gold. Yes, but um, as we know, gold has more value than, than, exactly. the, than the rest of the... Gold, gold would be top, the top on the list. Top exactly. on the list. Yes. So he was top on the list, even yes. in the image representing. Mm -hmm. And that Nebuchadnezzar was this big shot. Whatever he wanted, he got. Whatever he desired, he got. But then you see the thing of it. He And then he would even have said at a point in time, he's not this, this great big Babylon that I have built. And he would want people to worship him thinking that he was it. He was God. But then, you know what happened again? Sometimes in bad situations or situations, uh, even some of us, the Lord maybe has to allow us to get sick. So we're on our back and we can't move and then we're watching up and we say, boy, Lord, look at my situation. Of course, Nebuchadnezzar, who was powerful, same situation had to be brought. What, what, what can you tell us more about Nebuchadnezzar? You see, again, <laughs> in the Bible, we see in, in Daniel 4 where God had chosen Nebuchadnezzar as an agent for his doing. Okay, because every every battle Nebuchadnezzar went into, he got the victory, and he became so great that he thought that everything he had, was his, him. it was him. And in a dream, God came and warned him, and told him that the day. That he didn't give him the glory and he took all the praise for himself, on himself. He would make him be like the animal in the field, the beast in the field. All right? And even just like the quarterly would tell us that it says a striking example in the Bible of how God reaches powerful unbelievers is the story of King Nebuchadnezzar. And it says unbelievers. So in other words, God is not for the believer alone. God is not for only those going to church. God is for everyone. The Bible tells us in him we live, we move, and we have all been. He created us. We can do nothing of ourselves without him. In other words, if at all you were to decide, or God were to say, hey, let's see who have more lalin. Who can go under the sea and stay longer? You know what's happening? <laughs> Boy, that's trouble. Yes, that's true. Maybe you might stay a minute, two minutes, but after a while you got to come up. God is the one who supplies. God is the one who knows best, who provides everything else for us. So just as Nebuchadnezzar would have thought, hey, I have acquired all these things, I have built all these things, so therefore I am it, or I am God. And of course, he was considered like God. God's judgment was executed on him in a way similar to some Israelite kings, of course, would have faced as well. So the account of Nebuchadnezzar, who came to his senses and acknowledged creator God after that whole ordeal he had to go through, shows that God cares about the wealthy and powerful as well as the weak and the needy. So God loves everyone the same way. And therefore, none of us should feel, in other words, less than the other. None of us should feel in such a way that we must not, in other words, help others. 
Because the, there are times, of course, you go out and you meet someone who you think is, and they are, are maybe they were eagerly waiting for you to just come and pray for them or just to share a, a kind word or something of this sort because they understand and realize that they are in need as well. Of course, that's how it goes. Only if only all the rich and powerful and haughty among us mortal beings understood that truth that Nebuchadnezzar finally realized. What can we learn from this story? It says, first, God uses committed believers, such as Daniel, as a bridge to rich, powerful, and believers. Second, God can directly intervene in the witnessing process in order to reach powerful unbelievers. Nebuchadnezzar was humbled by God for his pride and arrogance. And though this was a very dramatic story, there are many other ways in which the rich and powerful and haughty can be brought low. And of course, you do not want to be stubborn. You do not want to be defiant such that God has to use whatever means to bring you low. But if at all you are humble enough and listen and pay attention, of course, success can be assured, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Another another area that we sometimes find ourselves difficult to witness to is lent people. People that have a, a, a lot of education and you think you are intimidated by, by by how they speak, how they how they how they carry themselves. In the Bible we have the story of Nicodemus. Nic Nicodemus. And it says there now Nicodemus was a learned man. Yeah. The Bible um, describes him. As a ruler of the Jews, Jesus referred to him as the teacher of Israel. He had a good understanding of the Bible and had a spiritual hunger for the Lord. For, from a human perspective, mm -hmm. he may have looked as though he were a follower of God. He kept all the commandments and he was a respected leader among the Jews. He was, a po he was powerful and we wealthy. Many looked at these signs. Many looked at these as signs that God had blessed him. Nevertheless, it turns out that the surface appearance were only that, surface appearances. Mm -hmm. Now, Brother Dominic, last week, we, we had that question. Does, is all... Oh, or should I say, when you see somebody um, rich and famous and, 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 and have a lot of material things, we usually say that they are blessed and that God has blessed them. Is that true to the fullest extent or is there some truth to that? God blesses in different ways. God blesses in different, how should I say, different ways, different quantities, different everything else. Yeah. Life and health, whoa, that's a blessing beyond. Good? Yes. So when you are healthy, you are strong and everything else. Mm -hmm. You are blessed. Yes. Now, sometimes you with your strength and your health have to be working for this sick, rich man. So who better off? Right. You understand? You are, yes, so you're yes. working for the money to get from him. But he just saying, boy, I envy you. I wish I was strong and could bend and could this. Right. So the Lord blesses in different ways. So we mustn't think in the sense, and of course he blesses as our abilities are able to even use those blessings, right? Now, it comes to the same thing of just like Nicodemus being learned, educated. But in other words, it tells you it was just appearance. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen some things that are sung and you or they tell you all that glitters is not gold? It's not gold, yes. Or you go and you knock on this thing you're thinking and you hear up. Mm -hmm. you're listening and you're hearing like it's a whole only start there. Mm -hmm. So in other words, it's looking all right on the outside, but inside is nothing. Mm -hmm. So really, he was this intelligent fella. He was, I mean, brilliant beyond. But when it came to some basic things of life, it was like he was hollow. He didn't understand. He didn't know what was going on. And there are certain people now who might be intellectual and all this thing. They want to ask, but they're not coming in the day, you know. So what happened? They're sneaking in and coming in the back door. Like, yes, you know, that's where everybody can see them. Yes. Because yes. why would this intelligent fellow want to go to this, this, this man that people want to shun and everything Right, else? right. And that's it. So God himself was willing and still open and able to help him and say, listen, fellow, let's talk about some basic things. Not that you don't have to get education from the university is not important. You know, it's important is this. But there are certain things that are more basic and are foundational to help you even understand and to use that measure of intellectualism that you have. When, Jesus, when, Jesus, when Jesus told him he had to be born again, 
to enter the kingdom of God. What was Nicodemus' response? And, 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 and what, what do we get in, in his response? Because Jesus told him that because he was learned, he should have known, he should have known what it, what it means to be born again. So no, please, please, please explain to us. Oh, oh, no, you right. would expect that's the thing that a yeah. learned man should know. But, but when well, come to think of it, born again, which means is like a birth. So how am I going to go back in my, no, but I know making sense. Time and me right. big as I am, already a little baby sometimes as co the mother having to carry now, me much bigger, maybe much whatever it is, what's going on? And Jesus says, listen, man, <laughs> what I'm telling you is simple stuff, but it's sounding complicated. You see like the outward shell that is there? You fix that up and it's looking nice. By talking about something inside, inside is hollow. So therefore we want to fix it up. So in other words, being born again and born of the spirit, there's a transformation in terms of your birth that is required. So in other words, marvel not I say unto you, don't be surprised. It's not that you have to go back into your mother's stomach, but you need to be changed. You need to be born again. You need to let go so that God can actually enter and transform your life. All right. Um, let us look at... Um, there's another guy, Zacchaeus. Yes, there's another guy. Right. Yeah, there's another guy, Zacchaeus, and there is another huge ruler of Matthew. Mm -hmm. Matthew. Matthew 19, verses 9. Matthew 19, verses 15 to 20, 22. All right. Um, uh, a question to... to to our viewers. What, what must we be careful of? Why, sorry. Why must we be careful of the trap of thinking that because we have the truth, which we do, then the knowledge of this truth alone is enough to save us? How many souls... We, well, let me ask that question. Why should we be careful with the knowledge that we have the truth? Can the truth alone save us? Let me ask another way. Mm -hmm. You are sick. You go into the hospital and the doctor has to attend to you. They say he's very good at what he's learned and studied. But then now, um, nurse, this man looking like, I don't even know, as if he's feeling hot, what is that? Uh, you don't even know if he's a fever. What I should give him? Um, or may, you see, so it's not just knowing the information, it's being able to apply. Yes. So you want to make sure that the doctor has studied all this stuff and knows all this kind of thing, is able to do such and apply that you can get healed. Right. So it comes to the same thing. A person professing to be a Christian saying, yes, I'm following Christ, I'm doing this, but in his whole behavior, his whole mannerisms, everything else, is not doing that which is right then of course it doesn't sink. So action is needed to follow the theory, that which you've learned. And that is one of the things that a lot of individuals would see us and say that we profess to be Christians, but then our behavior is such that is not in keeping with. Because everyone knows basically what a Christian is supposed to do or behave like. Mm -hmm. And then we don't, so they like, mm -mm. So they will use another word instead of saying Christian, and they will say hypocrite, because the lifestyle and the Learning is too different. It's too different. So we have to make sure that we not only just learn. So we don't only just go to church and sit down and then we come out and we say, yes, I actually was at church today, etc. But a transformation has to be seen and shown in our life. Amen. And that's it. Amen. Mm -hmm. now, now, even with, because um, we, 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 we dealt with, take for instance, Zacchaeus. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between Zacchaeus and, and, the, rich we, uh, and the same rich young ruler. Yes. The guy, in other words, Zacchaeus was a fellow who had defrauded people like mad. He was yes, working yes, yes for yes, the government, yeah, yes. but he defrauded people. So the tax might have been a dollar the person pay. He charged them if it's $100 or $10. Of course, the rest was his. He yes. handed the dollar to the treasury, but the rest he kept. Yes. Now, Jesus came and spoke with him and didn't say, Zacchaeus, you know, you're a thief. You need to give up. The no. Jesus would have spoken just as he did with others, presenting to them the transformation of life that is needed. And the Bible says, Zacchaeus, when he left, he said, Jesus, what you tell me, they're making sense. You know what I'm going to do? To show you even that and let people understand what the transformation thing, 
I am going, all those people that I know, and I had a book, I used to keep their name, all who I used to thief from. I'm going to be able to give them double and triple of whatever I have taken from them. So he learned, he was convicted and realized what the Lord had presented to him as truth. And that's what it comes. So I don't think Zacchaeus needed somebody who actually then was Jesus. So people need, our bosses or people we live with, um, in the areas that we live with, affluent and not, need to know and are willing and are wanting to know what truth is. So that because they realize, boy, I'm not comfortable, you know, you'll see them doing things, boy, I go in, but I'm missing something, I empty. So it's just like this tree that they're looking nice on the outside, but when you knock it inside, hollow and shallow and all these types of things. So that's what actually is needed. So we need to understand, we need yeah. to live a right. Right. Mm -hmm. So application. We don't have to be afraid. We have to be like the young servant in Naaman's time. Bold. Bold. And we have to and we have to go to God because it is God that is doing the calling. As we read in, in, in so many different passages, we saw where Jesus weave was with the the Naaman was the captain with Nebuchadnezzar. We do not know that. That is why God asks us to go. But God yeah. knows that. Amen? Brother, Brother Dominic, we have come to the end of our lesson study. What are your final thoughts on, on, this, on, on this study? Oh, there's so Listen, even before I would make a comment, you need to join us. There are a few places, definitely, we normally have this review together. You have questions that you want to ask in person. Every Sabbath, we call it, or Saturday, about quarter to 10, up to 10.30, we have this discussion. So you could fall in at the Rosewesia Church next to the bridge, or maybe Portsmouth, St. Joseph's St. Adventist Church, or Maho, or Canfield, and you could be able to interact and ask. Of course, the church is such that you will be in the Sabbath school class, and you're able to ask questions and be answered and led, in other words, to understand the truth of it. So we want to invite you as well that you can actually join with us. In closing, yes, we need to understand that whoever we are, whatever we are, we must not be afraid to help others. Just as we benefited from others helping us in our maybe affluential or powerful or wealthy status or not, we should be able to want to share that which we have. So you're tested and said, boy, that mango is good. You will tell somebody, hey, I bought it in that person's hand. Make sure you get there. It comes to the same thing that we are sharing with you and that Jesus wants you as your mission to share with others the good news that they could be transferred, transformed as well. Of course, we do wish you a pleasant week, which is going to come up and ask that you would be able to go on to line, as we've said, Google the SDA quarterly and be benefited and blessed as you read and you study. Any questions? You could call us, you could visit, and we would be blessed. Of course, as we close, we want to pray with you and pray for you that God would direct and bless us and transform our lives so that as we read and as we study, we would be impactive and changing our lives. Father God, we give you praise. We give you thanks for your goodness towards us. Your word, it says, is able to make us not only wise unto salvation, but if we submit to you, it's able to transform our lives. So we present all those who have been watching and listening and who would have questions that they would be able to join, they would be able to at least ask questions, and you would direct them to that which is truth, and they would end up being delivered from the shackles of the enemy, delivered from ignorance, and brought into truth and into that which will end up allowing salvation to be wrought. So we thank you and ask for your blessings. And even as they join us next week, at the same time on Sabbath, as we review that they would be blessed. We give you praise and thanks in your name for their sake. Bless them physically. Bless those who would have health issues, those who have financial issues, educational, family problems. God, come through and bring that resolve, we pray, and reclaim it for them and with them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Do have a pleasant week, and we want to look forward, we look forward to seeing you next week when we would end up reviewing another lesson in the quarterly.